Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Annie Klein, and I will be your host this evening, and today's episode is all about skin tones. We are, uh, oh, we have a bit of an echo here. Sorry, we're going to be fixing that for just a second. But, um, <laughs> sorry, the episode is all about mixing skin tones. Now, today I'm going to be working in oils, but the colors that I'm mixing should be uh, pretty transferable across all mediums. So I am using the extra fine uh, Charvin uh, oil paints here today, and you do not absolutely have to use this brand. Uh, the reason why I chose this brand is because they have some specific colors that I really wanted to show you guys, and they're near, dear, near and dear to my heart. So I'm very excited to show you that. Uh, but today's episode is JL193. Uh, so if you are interested in anything that I am using, uh, go to jerryzardorama.com and type in the search bar the code JL193 and everything should come up. So uh, if you want to check out the stuff that way. Now also, the little just side note, it's raining here in North Carolina, so you might hear a little bit of ambiance above me. Uh, and also, we officially have my fantastic moderators back in the set here. So the amazing Amanda and the fantastic Frida are here with me today. So if you have questions, make sure to put them in your chats and they will make sure to let me know what you are asking so we can uh, interact that way. So let's get started. Now, uh, let's first, if you want to go to the overhead view, uh, I want to show you my reference picture. Uh, this is an awesome reference photo that I got off of a royalty-free uh, website that's called either, it's either Unsplash or Pixabay, I cannot honestly remember which one I got this from, um, but they have some incredible photography. The girl who did this is a wonderful photographer, and I'm sorry I did not actually remember to grab her name there. Um, but this is the photo that I'm actually gonna be working with here, um, because I love the fact that they had different people with different skin tones on here, so I could really give you a good range of what we're looking for. Um, but just so you know, I'm not gonna actually be painting a picture today. I'm just gonna be mixing skin tones for you guys to see. Um, now, on my palette right now is what I would consider my basic standard set of colors. So I have titanium white. I have the, uh, this is actually the French primary yellow. Now, if you're not using Charvin, uh, you can also go with a, just a basic lemon yellow, which is really good, or even a cadmium yellow. Uh, those are the two that I usually switch back and forth between. Lemon yellow is just a little bit brighter and a little bit more like zing yellow, whereas that cadmium yellow has a little bit more warmth to it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then I have a cadmium red deep. Then I have an alizarin crimson. An ultramarine blue, which is, this is actually the deep ultramarine blue. Uh, some oil colors come in either deep ultramarine there's also just ultramarine, and then they also have an ultramarine light. Uh, any of those will work for this purpose. Um, it's just kind of personal preference at that point, which kind of tone of that blue that you lean towards. Uh, then I have a sap green, and a yellow ochre, and a burnt sienna. Now, this is, if I do not buy any other paints, this is my base standard for what I'm painting. Uh, because I can use these colors to mix quite a few different colors together. Uh, now you will notice I also do not have black on my palette. The reason why is because I fall into the category of like a, a little bit of a purist and I like to make my own blacks. Uh, now the way that I do that is I take burnt sienna, just take a little bit of that, and then I take ultramarine blue and I mix those together. So right now it's kind of got a good ratio of the two colors together. Um, I usually, whenever I'm trying to make a black substitute, I usually mix a little bit more ultramarine blue in than the burnt sienna, but I'm just trying to warm up that blue and also, uh, or, yeah, warm up the blue and then cool down the burnt sienna. And those two pigments together usually are so dark that in comparison to any of my other colors on my palette, it appears black. It's not actually black, but I actually probably would have put a little bit more blue 
in there. But this is what I use instead of ivory black or lamp black. Now if you use black, you're not wrong. It's not a bad thing. It's just my own personal preference. But when it comes to me mixing colors, this is what I use because I just, I got in the habit when I was in college and it just it kind of stuck with me, but this is what I use as a black color here. So um, to kind of show you what that is, I'll mix a little bit of titanium white in there. And you can actually see this one right here leans a little bit almost to purpley blue. I hope you guys can see that. Can you guys see that on the camera? Is that translating well? Hope it's, there's not a glare or anything. Just to double check. There we go. So if I need to, I can actually just scrape this off and clean off my palette and stick it in one little spot in case I need to zoom in a little bit more. But this uh, is a nice, uh, very desaturated kind of blue gray almost color. Um, now this one right here, I got my. I also have my handy uh, easy wipers to clean off my palette knife here. Take a little bit more titanium white. Now this one I didn't mix that much as much blue in it, so it kind of leans a little bit to the warmer side. So that I get the two juxtapositions between those two colors, uh, which is really fun to use in portraiture. Um, but if I do need a black though, that's how I usually get my black. Now if I happen to have uh, an image like this where she just has a huge amount of darks in her hair and there's darks up here too. I might actually grab a black um, or, or something that's really, really dark, uh, especially if I'm painting that large of an area just because I don't want to have to mix my colors that much. <laughs> you can actually mix it all in the beginning, which would help, um, but that's, that's the one time that I usually do grab a black uh, oil paint. So that's how I mix my black. Uh, now, typically when I do start with oils, um, and again, remember I said these colors translate across all acrylics, watercolors, squash, oil paints, uh, because these colors are usually found in all the lines. So uh, when I do start with oils though, I usually start with a lot of burnt sienna and then I tone my canvas. And so this usually tints a lot of my paints. Um, but if you actually do take burnt sienna, and just a little bit of titanium white and mix it together. You can get a really beautiful um, kind of just tint of that burnt sienna, which is honestly a version of skin tone that I've used all across the board a lot. Um, so like this right here, I might use in her lips. Um, there's a little bit here in her forehead. Um, right there in the corner of her eye is the same. Uh, her lips down here, uh, her lips, and then this one also has freckles. So I might actually, at the very end, once I'm done painting this, I might even let this dry, take some burnt sienna, kind of splatter it on a little bit, and then pick it back up just, just a touch. Uh, but you can definitely see this color in like just the top of her eye, uh, her eyelid right there. And again, right in the corner of those eyes, because um, this is like right here where your eye, um, the white of your eye starts turning in and you have just that little pink in the corner. Uh, this is a really fun color to use. So I'm trying to like make sure that this is all on camera. Now uh, from there, I might even use a little bit of the yellow ochre as well to give me a really fun I like to think of yellow ochre as one of my yellows, but I also like to think of it kind of as neutral because this is not the boom in your face yellow that this, um, this French primary yellow is, or even a lemon yellow. It has just a little bit of desaturation to it. So even this I might use in the photos. So like right down here where her, um, her lips start to turn down into her chin. It gets a little yellow there. Um, I really like this color for like right here in her cheek. Um, not the like the rosy part of her cheek, but like just kind of the transition area between the top of the cheek and where the top of the lip kind of is. Um, also just a touch on the tip of her nose. Um, and then down here, she's got a little bit right in the corner of her mouth here. 
and you know maybe a little bit up in her forehead because your forehead tends to be a little bit more yellow than the rest you have uh, zones of your face so the forehead tends to be yellow the middle of your section uh, of your face where your cheeks and your nose are tend to be more on the red tone side uh, because that's where your blood vessels are a lot closer to the the top of your skin so you can see that rosiness to it and then your chin and your neck tend to be a lot cooler so those are the blue tones and things like that now if you do have an issue seeing color a really fun trick to do is to take a piece of either gray or white paper you can use a note card or something like that um, and then put it on your your painting and just kind of block out whatever the color is because it's I know seeing color is one of those tricks that once you actually get it you will it's it's like riding a bike you never really lose it but it's hard to get to the point of really seeing color in skin tones and the different like whether or not it's more red or more blue and that's that's okay because it's it's one of those things that once you get it you'll get it uh, but this is a fun trick to do now the other thing I wanted to talk to you about before I get too far into this actually is uh, reference photos so skin tone can always appear different as I'm sure there's there's no straightforward formula for skin tone color mixing right uh, because her skin tone and my skin tone would look different in this this lighting if I go 20 feet that direction into the other room I'm pretty sure my skin tone is going to look very different because there's different lighting. If I go outside right now because it's storming and dark outside, my skin tone is going to look completely different. So it's good to know these different mixes, but you really have to just make sure you stop and look at your reference photo. Now, even though this is my reference photo, I've printed it out a couple times because when I was originally printing it out, for whatever reason, my printer was making it super yellow. Now, if you're printing it out, you know, this isn't, wrong I could still paint this image but in comparison they're still very very different whereas like the one uh, that's got the more yellow tones it's way warmer than the ones over here where it has all the, the more of a blue tone to it um, I don't know why my printer decided to go really yellow but uh, that's the one thing that you guys have to know is that it's always going to appear different, so just kind of take the time and really look and see. And whenever I'm painting painting uh, portraiture, I usually end up laying down a, a color and then kind of analyzing whether or not, in relation to all the other colors around it, whether or not it looks right. So it might not be the perfect color, but um, it's definitely one of those things you just kind of have to look and see and evaluate as you go along. Now, this is that burnt sienna tint, and this is my yellow ochre. I will also mix those together for a nice, nice blush tone. Skin tone, flesh tone. Am I not allowed to say flesh tone anymore? I mean, I know people are upset because flesh tones come in all different colors, but it's, you know. I but, think it's specifically nude. Nude. There's not just one flesh tone. All right, so this is the yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and then titanium white, because I had mixed those two together, and then I mixed them all. Now this is a little bit more of a rosy color, um, and I can see this a lot in her skin tones. Um, you have it right here, down, down in the chin, up here in her hairline. Her hairline got real warm uh, right there, so, um, yeah, that's that's where I'd find those really rosy tones. Um, maybe a little bit on the touch of her, the top of her cheek, but I'd probably boost the um, the pigment in this, and I'd use less uh, titanium white for that because hers is a lot darker. Um, but this tone right here, I can definitely see in her chin, and then with this lovely lady down here, I can also see it in her forehead and her ear. I mean, I can see it in different areas, like even the underside of her eye right there, just a touch. So that's those two colors. Um, now, I know a lot of people might be like, sap green, sap green shouldn't be in a face, but I love using green in my, my skin, my portraiture. Uh, the areas that I really like to do it, uh, or use this in uh, this, the portraits are 
right on the underside of the eyelids, um, kind of like where, right underneath your eyebrows, but like right in that like little crease right here, uh, just to kind of cool down those tones. Um, but you can mix it with some yellow ochre. Gives it like a really funky, almost swamp green. <laughs> No, this isn't the color that I would use. Although, uh, again, it's one of those things that you could really look. Um, like this this funky green color, it's hard to see um, this being in anyone's face, but like I could maybe see a little bit being like just underneath her, um, her lip and right around her nose and maybe even right here transitioning into that shadow. Um, just a touch of green, just to kind of give it a, a good surface variety and color variety. Um, and this one, I could maybe even use it in her hairline, uh, which would be real fun. But that's a funky green color that, like, nobody would expect in a portrait, but it gives it a nice interest. Now, if I start mixing some titanium white in there, and maybe add even a little bit of that cadmium red, because remember, red and green are opposites on the color wheel, so the red and the green will kind of desaturate each other which gives you a very lovely um, shade of brown, otherwise known as mud. I'm, I'm essentially making mud, but it's, it's real pretty mud. <laughs> but let's see. I could use this in her neck right here again. Um, and her, again, I can see it in like the underside of her eyes. Whereas like I would make a lot of those shadows uh, more of the purple shades, but I definitely like to pop in a little bit of this green for some variety. Right there is where I'd use that. So that's my sap green. All right, then my ultramarine blue. Now this I really love to use, just a, a nice cool blue like this with uh, gentlemen who have uh, five o'clock shadows. They're really fun. Uh, now, I do have some other reference photos here, uh, just to give you some more varieties of skin tones. Uh, this blue, I honestly might use as like the highlights along the, just the little areas right here, um, and just around the ear. And then in her hair, and this light blue, I really like the idea of right here, right where that reflective light kind of hits the, just the top of her cheek and underneath her eye. Um, that would be a really fun color to use. Now this other, uh, this blue I also use a lot in um, the eye, the, the whites of the eye, because uh, the whites of the eye are not white at all. If you look at it and really look at the color, uh, sometimes it's in shadow, uh, most of the time it's in shadow, but it's got some pinks, especially in the corners, it can go a little bit yellow tone. It can also go more blue. And when you give that variety uh, to the, the whites of the eye, it brings it to life, which is really pretty. And then last but not least, I also have this lovely gentleman um, who has some really pretty blues in his skin tone right here. And just that reflective light, again, hitting him um, it gives it the beautiful kind of blue tones. But let's bring these back. I also like to use this uh, for shirts, like anything that's white, like her shirt right here. It's hard to see, but right there, that is a very light blue. Uh, Cause again, white objects appear white, but they're not actually white. Um, and again, I can even take this ultramarine and mix it into any of my other mixes. And they give me a really cool kind of shadow tone. So like this right here is where I might actually use it, like in the top of her eye right there. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I don't have a glare on this picture. Um, the top of her eye right there um, just underneath there, like kind of where the, and there's a lot of really cool lights in this, this photo. So like her cheek right there, this looks very similar in the color. 
um, right there just above her lip has that nice coolness to it but that's a fun way of using that blue do we have any uh, color colors or color questions so far we working everyone's Not just so far but everybody's taking notes <laughs> yes it is it is a fun thing to do so remember if you guys have questions though be sure to ask them I am happy to ask or answer them all right, now we're getting into more of the, the warmer tones. So I have my alizarin crimson here, which is a real fun color. Oh, dang it, I got some blue on my whites. Uh, oh, this is something that I used to do when I first started out oil painting. Um, I used to always have two blobs of white paint. Uh, the reason why is because one would be for all of my cool colors, and then the other one would be for all of my warm colors. And then I would keep them separate. I would also keep my paint brushes separate. So I'd have a warm brush and a cool brush. And I'd try to keep them not mixed together. Because if I really wanted to have a nice warm tone. And I had a cool color on my brush. It's going to make it a little bit more muddy. Uh, but that's more specifically for oil painting. So if you guys are having issues getting the color to apply the way that you really, really want to. That is a trick that I started doing when I was in college just to kind of make sure that I did not mess my colors up when I really had them mixed the way that I wanted to. But I don't do it anymore. All right, so this is just the alizarin crimson and titanium white. So it's a really, really pretty pink um, that I, I love to use this for lips. I also really love to use this for the nose uh, and the cheeks, honestly, uh, because uh, even her nose, as much as it's not super pink, I might up the pinks in and the, the warm kind of red tones in her nose and her cheeks at, throughout all of these portraits, honestly. Uh, just to give them, the more warm tones that you give a face, the more alive it looks. So if you go the opposite direction and you make their nose and their cheeks look like blue or green, you'll make them look like a zombie, which is totally cool. You can do all the zombie paintings, but uh, that's when you really start to play with all of your colors. So, again, this right here, um, same color. I love that for like her cheek. It's very similar. Her lips, again, I would use that right here in her nose. Um, right where your, your nostril starts, usually it has a really really nice warm tone to it, and then it goes back into shadow. So I would start mixing a purple between the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine, which I'll, I'll do in a second here, um, but I just wanted to kind of continue to show you this. So again, right in the corner of her eye, I might use this, uh, her ear, your ears also, don't forget you have ears. Uh, this is a fun color for that. Again, her lip has a lot of warmth to it, but I would probably use this color in her nose more so uh, just kind of give her a little bit more warmth um, and this lady has some definite tones of that in her face too um, this one again right here in the cheek right there in the lip is a little bit darker so i'd probably use a little bit less titanium white in her lips um, i honestly wouldn't use this specific color in this face and this is where you can kind of edit your palettes to fit the portrait that you're working on um, there's definite warmth in the face but like I would say that's more of like that um, the burnt sienna has a little bit more of a yellow tone to it right there um, than this like super pink kind of a color uh, but again her ear also has that alizarin crimson kind of a color to it uh, maybe even the tops of her shoulders because that should appear nice and warm anywhere where the sun should naturally hit your body would appear more warm and then this lovely gentleman right here in the fingers because your fingertips um, when you don't have no polish on them like mine um, the your nail beds usually tend to have a warmth to them as well uh, when you're painting like hands and things but like right here in his where his um, eye starts going back into his forehead and the side of his face that's got the nice warmth to it and the top of his thumb there um, I might even hit just a touch down here but I'd probably again use less titanium uh, or yeah the titanium white and maybe a little bit more of that burnt sienna together 
for the sand. You got a question? Um, can you just tell what colors are in this exact shade that you're you're This is it right here? Mm -hmm. This is just alizarin crimson and titanium white. That's it. So it's it's just those two. It's just a tint of this alizarin crimson. Now, when it starts getting mixed is when it starts getting real fun. So, ultramarine blue makes a really fun purple. Now, again, remember, I already have the titanium white in here. I'm just kind of shifting my colors ever so slightly. And this is kind of typically how I work when it comes to portraiture. I, I make a color, and then I start taking that color and then tinting it with all of my other colors. Um, so I might have like a tint of the alizarin crimson and then mix in a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of blue, and then kind of adjust my color as I see in my reference, you know? But this beautiful kind of, let's go a little bit darker, why not? It's really pretty purpley. This is the color that I usually end up using a lot for nostrils. And again, the five o'clock shadows. This is a really fun color for that. Uh, but this also is a really good color for um, right here, underneath your um, your eyebrow, where your that space is starting to move back into your head because your eye socket's right there. Um, so shadows, I, that's again why I don't have black on my palette. If I had black and I tried to mix black into this alizarin crimson, it would make a really funky kind of mud. Again, it's one of those things that like it's useful and you can totally use it, but your shadows are not the color of your skin plus black. It's purple or maybe a blue or maybe a green and it kind of it could even be a straight up burnt sienna because um, I like in her face I could see me using just pure burnt sienna like right here where it's starting to go into shadow. Um, but I might cool it down just a little bit, maybe a little bit of the loser and crimson, which is really fun. But uh, that's the way you kind of push and pull is that you have to know your, your light source, right? Question? Do you use any mediums to tone down the textures when you're blending? That comes from Marv on YouTube. Um, I typically only use medium when I'm trying to get it to dry faster. Uh, so like if I want to, and I mean, at the same time, you also have to remember, especially for the oil painting, this wouldn't be the same for acrylics because I just maybe use a touch of water to thin it out if I want to do like a glazing. But um, when I when you work with oils, you have to work from, uh, it's fat over lean. So I will start with a spike oil and thin out my paints, which would usually be the burnt sienna, just to kind of find my forms and things like that. But once I start moving that way, uh, I would use less and less spike oil. And that's the only reason why I would really use the, the mediums is just to follow the fat over lean rule. I wouldn't typically do it just to thin out my colors. Because um, I don't really do a whole lot of glazing with oils. I tend to not blend. Like I kind of chunk in the color and then move on to the next facet of the face, if that makes sense. Now, if I start getting too many colors that are kind of mixing and making mud, I will leave it for a day and then I'll come back in and then I'll lay colors over it. Or maybe I even leave it for a week to let it like kind of dry, let the top layer dry, and then go back over it and start laying in different colors to where they don't mix so much. I hope that answers that question. <laughs> um, my hair, let me clean this off. Love these easy wipers. All right. So, like I said, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna is a really fun color. Now, they're both pretty strong as far as um, one color to the next. So, they don't really overpower each other. So I kind of do a 50-50 mixture with this one. But that really pretty warm red uh, almost has like a kind of an oranginess to it. Uh, this color right here is what I use a lot in the cracks of the mouth. Here, let me pull this back over. Uh, in the cracks of the mouth, 
Uh, usually I use this in the nostrils. So like right here, her nostril, where it's starting to go into shadow, I will use um, this really, really funky red. And then right here in the eyelids, right where it creases, I like to use this as well. Um, I also can kind of uh, cool it off a little bit by using a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Which again makes, because remember this is the ultramarine and the burnt sienna makes a black. So this again makes a really dark color, which is really good for your nostrils things like that. And that's where you can kind of paint it to appear black, but you're not actually using black and it's still really pretty color. So like right there, that's her nostril color is what I would use. Now I might even use this color just a little bit in her eyebrows on her, the crease again, um, right here with her. This is a color that I might use here along her eye as well and around her nose for that crease and kind of maybe a touch on her forehead just to kind of warm it up a little bit. Um, let's see in here. Let's see if I see this color anywhere. I might even use this for like her ear canal. I almost said ear hole, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Ear canal um, right there, but that's a really dark color. I might mix in a lot more ultramarine blue for that. Um, but like right there on the tip of her nose and this is a really good color for like her lips right there. Um, I can see some of it right here in the, 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 the nose, uh, where it kind of folds into the cheek. And again, right there on the eyelid, definitely in the ear to kind of warm that up. And then this might even be like the touch of like right here to kind of warm up that cheek a little bit. And then let's see if we see it in here. This is a really dark, um, photo. Like all of this is in shadow. So there's really like, I can see a little bit of definition. So I might even use this to kind of warm up some areas of his hands that like I can see, I don't know if you, it's translating well on the camera there, but it just, it appears so dark um, that you can kind of get away with just doing a wash of shadow and kind of hitting those uh, highlights. But like, I would probably warm up the hand with this um, right here on the palm, uh, right here on the, the creases here and then again in the ear so that's a fun color to play with now let's clean that off how are we doing on time by the way 30 minutes left all right yeah, please. perfect well i still have a lot of colors to go over so i want to make sure all right this is that cadmium red uh that gives you a really fun pink I'm like, this is like just a really, this is like the pink color that I refuse to wear now as an adult that I loved as a child. I think uh, when I was a kid, I called it pinky. <laughs> okay, I don't think I, I called it pinky. I know I called it pinky. I'm just trying to look cooler than I am. All right, so this one is again, just a different shade of um, like a pink kind of tone that again, I would use in throughout the face. So like with her, she actually does have a blemish right here. Um, if I really wanted to paint that blemish in, that would be the color I'd use. Uh, I probably wouldn't, cause that would just be, you know, uh, it would probably, if you paint blemishes like that, it would appear like a mistake. So I would probably pretend like it's not there, but um, this I can see in her cheeks. Um, a little bit in her forehead, but again, this is very, very, uh, blue tones. So, uh, if this was any warmer, I wouldn't be seeing as much of this color, but like you can see it again, right in her nose, right here in the, her T zone, um, that color, I would drop that in too. Um, this one, I'm not seeing it as much again, like maybe just in her cheeks, but like not quite the right color for this, this portrait in here. But I can take a little bit of that cadmium, or I'm sorry, not cadmium yellow. Um, this is the French primary yellow, which is very similar to a cadmium yellow. Um, and then kind of warm it up for a nice funky salmon color, which is real fun. 
and oop, I still have some of that or the uh, cadmium right on my palette knife here. There it is. That's that's mixed. Uh, if I take that and I start getting tints from there. Now I'm gonna kind of leave like the different mixes so you can see my progression. So I would use all of these different colors. I would just make sure that I mix a color, look at my reference, see where that color is. And now, especially if I'm using a picture like this, I will paint all three of their faces at the same time uh, because I want there to be color harmony. So this color right here, you wouldn't expect to be in her face a whole lot, but like I would put it in there because I want it to appear like they all kind of belong together. Um, and plus I can kind of see a little bit right here where that transitions from that highlight into her uh, darker skin tone. Uh, I can see that right there on the nose, right here on her chin. Um, and again, like I can see, this is very similar. Like if she had a foundation, I feel like it would be this color. <laughs> um, so like I can see it all over her face. I can see it in her face is a little bit lighter. So like I can see it here, kind of over here on her chin, right there, just in the kind of not the highlight highlight areas, but like where it's a little bit darker. Now hers, I can see it in her nose. I can see just the touch on the tip of the nose here and just right here where that again transitions from the, the brightest highlight into the darker um, kind of temple area. Uh, right here, just in the ear. I might even use this just on the lips just a little bit to warm them up a little. Um, but, you know, it's another color that like I can use in multiple portraits. I can see this on his cheek right there, in his ear, on the tips of his fingers. Um, even right here, I would probably uh, cool this off with a little bit of ultramarine blue to get right here. And maybe even a little bit of the yellow ochre so I can see a little bit more yellow ochre right here. Um, but that's, sorry, I'm trying to make sure there's not a glare. Uh, that's a color that I can kind of see. If I tint this, I can get those colors, you know? So Bamboo Studios on YouTube is curious how many of these mixtures would also lend themselves to landscape painting. That depends on your landscape painting. So if you see these colors in your landscape, then absolutely you can use them. Um, then again, remember, like I have, this is my basic palette that I've used this for portraiture. I've also used this for landscaping um, or landscape paintings. I've also used this for a still life uh, that I painted of a, uh, I, I think it was some kind of a, it, it was an alcoholic beverage. Uh, I'm an adult, I promise. <laughs> Um, but it was a very moody picture of a glass of uh, beverage with some olives stuck in there. <laughs> but I, I, I can still use these basic colors across the board for all my different paintings. Um, you can use these for animals. Um, it's a very versatile palette. This is why this is my go-to basic palette whenever I paint anything. Now I might start adding things in depending on what I'm painting and then depending on what I see. So, uh, Amanda, do you have a question? Yes, Karen on Facebook um, has a question about your general process. If you yeah. were going to paint these faces um, as an actual painting, would you tone the whole face first and then add skin tone? Yes, uh, in case you didn't hear the question, she's asking when I first start a painting, um, do I tone the whole canvas? and then start adding skin tones. Yes, I do. I usually tone my canvas with burnt sienna. Um, that's a very traditional uh, color to use just because even the old masters use that just because it was a very uh, pocketbook friendly <laughs> color. Uh, it didn't cost a whole lot of money because the earth tones were very readily available. And uh, you can also, um, it, they were everywhere. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's one of those things that like, it's in nature. It's a, a color that you can find in nature very, very easily. And then I can tint that burnt sienna warmer, cooler, and then add in colors that like, it, it just works really, really well. Now, 
If I decided to get real funky with it and tone my whole canvas with magenta, I've done that before too. Uh, but that magenta will affect all of my colors to an extent. If I let it dry and then I start layering back on top of it, that magenta will still be present and kind of sparkle through the painting, especially if I don't cover it up all the way. But um, it will no longer really mix into my paints, but it still kind of has a, an effect because you're putting color next to color. So if I put this yellow next to magenta, it's going to have that really fun uh, kind of vibration between them. Whereas like if I put magenta next to the burnt sienna, it wouldn't have as much of that kind of play with the colors. Do you paint in your darks first or is there any particular order you do the colors in? Uh, with oil paintings, I usually paint dark to light because that's it's a little bit easier to do so. Uh, with acrylics, I like to say I have color ADHD because I jump around between all of them. Um, I will go, I, I usually start very similar to my oil painting, so I go with the darks first just because I'm used to it, but then I'll see a color and I'm like, oh, I want to pop that in there, and then I want to pop this color in there, and then I will go back and forth between my lights and my darks and my midtones um, and kind of work that way. Now, watercolors, you have to work light to dark because if you go the other direction, you're going to be fighting with it the entire time. All right, now, this right here is the uh, French primary yellow, which is very similar to a cadmium yellow, um, or you can also, again, like I said, get a lemon yellow. Um, this right here, I would not use just straight into any of their faces just because it's really bright, um, but I might start toning it down. Um, and I might start turning it down with kind of a purple. So a little touch of alizarin crimson and a little touch of the ultramarine blue because blue and red make purple, right? But I like the alizarin crimson myself a little bit better. Um, you can use that cadmium red. That's not a no-no. You can, you can do that. That might have been a little bit too much of the blue. So let's add a touch of that red back in there, which is really strong. This is what I do while I'm painting. I'm like, oh, what about this one? And then I mix it in and I'm like, that was too much. That was just too much, that's too much. Which is okay, because if you mix it on your palette, it's not on your painting yet. And that's all right. But actually, this color right here is, it's mud. It's really pretty mud. And honestly, I could see this in like, this is kind of like almost like that green color because I had the, the blue and the yellow, but I had a little bit of that red kind of desaturating it. So right here in the corner of her eye, right down here around her mouth, I can see that color a lot. I can see it here as well, right here in her forehead, around that nostril, kind of up on this cheek. I might warm it up just a little bit on her cheek again. Um, and then like I can see this around her, her mouth too, maybe around her eye as well. So this is a really fun color, um, but instead of the, the bright, bright yellow, I would probably kind of tone it down a little bit. Now the one thing I do with my yellow, that was a mess of a color. Hold on, ignore that, didn't happen. My, my white color had um, some other color in there. So we're just gonna put out some more titanium white so I don't have other colors added in. That's the one thing is if you do notice that you get a color mixed in that you did not intend, I mean you can keep going and see what it'll do just to kind of play, but for the most part don't don't let it kind of affect your color if you don't have to. Now that um, the yellow is quite strong, just FYI, uh, usually the cadmium yellows and the lemon yellows are pretty strong pigments, but I usually never, ever, ever have a perfect white highlight. I usually have, oops, I got some titanium white on my hand now. I got a new rag. Clean my hand off. Um, so this right here is just tinted with the yellow. So my highlights will be this color. And against everything else, they'll appear perfectly white, but I don't actually have any completely white paint, usually on my paintings. 
Now, if I do mess with this um, and decide to kind of pop my highlights just a little bit more, I will have, and I'm literally talking like the tiniest little dot of pure white, and usually those are found in the eyes, just on the tip of the, like the, the most highlighted area of the mouth, just the tiniest portion on the nose, um, and maybe even in the corner of the eyes. So you can see it right there. Um, I wouldn't do it in the corner of her eye because there is no highlight there, but like I would not make all of that white. That would look like your eye would go straight there and you'd be like, what's going on? Because that's the like a brightest bright next to a darkest dark and your eye is going to zero in on that. But same thing here, her lip, just a bit on her nose. I might even do it just a touch on her che cheek there, but I would probably leave out the ivory, not a pure white. Eyes. There's just the tiniest little highlight in the corner of her eye. So I have two questions from YouTube. Okay. Uh, number one is MJP wants to know if this particular palette combination has a name. Like, is it a modified Zorn? Um. Or is it the Emmy Special? It's the Emmy Special. I honestly have not tried to find this palette in any particular area. I know the Zorn palette is four colors. Um, and it uses black as your like gray tones and blues and stuff like that. So this is definitely not a Zorn palette. Um, I never really sought out a specific palette to use myself. These are just the colors that I always, always, always go to. Um, so yeah, I would say any special. If I find the name of this, I'm going to put it in there for you. But I really don't think this has a very specific name. And then the second question, going back to earlier, you mentioned you used to use a cool brush and a warm brush. Yes. Do you do the same for light colors and dark colors? No. Um, although I will, because again, usually in my oil paints, I usually work um, from dark to light. So normally I don't have a dark and a cool, or a dark and a light brush because they both will be dark. They'll just be one's warm, one's cool. Um, but I just like to keep them separate just so I don't get mud colors that I didn't intend, you know? All right, so now, now we are going into additional colors that I like to add in uh, that are not very specific to this palette, but if I start seeing different colors in um, my portraits, I will use these. Now this one right here is the cadmium orange. Um, so it's a really pretty orange. And again, if you start mixing and making a tint of it, this is a really fun color that I've used a lot in like cheeks, or this is also another one of those ones that I use in the nose to kind of warm it up. Um, let's see, so like right here, I can see it a lot in her cheek there, in her nose, her cheek. Um, I wouldn't say that it's really much found in here. I might use a touch on her lips. Again, just to make sure that I have that color harmony, I will touch it into her face. Um, I might even use just a touch on the underside of her eyelid there. But this is a really fun one. Um, now if I wanted to kind of cool it down, the opposite of orange on the color wheel is blue. So, I think I added a little too much, but there we go. that kind of desaturates it and gives me a very, very pretty muddy kind of color. And I just stuck my paint, my hand in paint again. I'm a mess guys. All right, let me clean myself up because I don't want to get paint all over the place. All right. Hopefully I can keep that from happening again. All right. Now the other one is purple. This is a deep violet. It's not the word I don't say very well. <laughs> Which would be Katie? Dioxazine. The what? Dioxazine. Dioxazine. There you go. <laughs> Dioxazine purple is another one that you can use and is found. Diox. Diox purple. Diox purple. Diox purple. Okay. That's what we're going to do from now on. Diox purple. Uh, that is another one that you can, like this is deep violet. If you look in other ranges, uh, you can also find this, um, the Diox purple. Um, but like, I like to get a really rich purple. Uh, the reason why I really love to get a really rich purple is because this pigment is so dark 
that I can also use this as my darkest darks. My Instead of a black, I use a really dark purple. Um, but this, my favorite combination is, let me get a little bit more of that violet, is the violet and burnt sienna. It makes, honestly, this is my absolute favorite darkest dark kind of color. Uh, this is, I've used this in the creases of the eyelids. I've used this in um, the nostrils, like where it actually goes in. Uh, this is what I would use for that, uh, that area where her ear canal was actually visible and it's just a dark space. Um, this is an area that, or a color that I would use a lot. Now if I use a little bit of titanium white, I can start getting a really pretty lilac kind of color, but it's not like boom in your face lilac. It's a little desaturated, but this again is one of those colors that's really cool for um, five o'clock shadows. And this is in shadows in general. Um, like this is the color that I would use in her face. Um, right, right here where it starts turning into the shadows. Um, her face, I might actually use a little bit more of the burnt sienna and kind of not lighten it so much. Um, but that's where I would use that on the tops, like the shadow areas of her nose where it starts turning in um, and into like that crease where the nose and the cheek kind of meets. Um, but like right here, I might use it for her neck. Um, again, for the hairline where that hair starts covering up the, the face um, in the crease of her eye. You know, it's, it's a very useful color um, to kind of pop in. And it's a really pretty color that a lot of people don't expect. So again, it's one of those colors that kind of brings the life to face, or, wow, <laughs> brings the face to life. <laughs> I've been doing that all day, mixing my words. That's not unusual, excuse me. <laughs> all right. Now, we also have, oh, we have a question? Lisa Vogel would like to know why burnt umber isn't in your palette. Just wait. Burnt umber will be later. Don't worry. I'm getting there. Uh, all right. This is a phthalo green, uh, phthalo viridian. Uh, so this is a really funky green color that a lot of people don't expect again to find in a portrait. Um, and I don't always use this again. This is why this is not in my basic palette set, but this is in, um, my additional colors. So I have used this again for five o'clock shadows. Uh, because sometimes the, the skin just looks a little bit like green. So instead of using a sap green, I'll use this, um, this Thalo Viridian, and it gives it kind of a, a weird, funky sparkle, which is real fun. Um, but then if I add a little bit of the cadmium to it, it makes a luscious purple that I love so much. Because remember, it, it honestly should make kind of a, like a, a brown, but like the, the blue kind of tone of that phthalo and the red in the cadmium makes such a pretty color. Look at that. I love it. Very desaturated, kind of almost like a gray violet. Um, let's see. This I might use a touch right here right here in her, the bottom of her, like the, the lip where it starts going in the shadow. Um, hers right there. Uh, hers a little bit right there in the cheek, but then I could definitely use it in this portrait here um, because I can see a lot of those like blue tones, you know? Um, and again, I would do the color harmony where I would have this kind of come in in her neck right here where it's a little bit cooler, uh, right here on the bottom of her cheek. And then right here, this is very similar to his arm and kind of up here in his forehead as well. All right, so that's my, my phthalo. All right, so now let's get a little bit more into the other colors. This is why I chose Charvin though, because they have so many colors. So if you find yourself mixing a color over and over and over and over and over again, look in the Charvin line, they usually have it. <laughs> so you don't actually have to mix it over and over and over again. Um, so this is, 
I'm probably gonna not say this correctly, Auber Pink, Auber? A-U-B-E-R-E, -E. Auber Pink. So just by itself, it's one of those colors that I usually make with a mix of um, like a red and a yellow, kind of a orangey kind of a tone, where it's a little bit salmon-y, um, but if you mix titanium white in there, it gives you a really lovely color. Again, one of those colors that like I love to use in skin tones. I would have used this in her lips for sure. Um, now if I start mixing in a little bit of yellow ochre, Maybe, Oop, a little too much, too much yellow ochre. Get that auburn pink back in there. So this is a little bit less titanium white in there. It still has a little bit in there, but like I can see this beautiful color. This is the color I would use for her cheeks, her forehead, definitely on her nose. Um, and again, for color harmony, I would pop it into her face too and hers. It's, this is a color of her cheek as well. You can definitely see it just repeated throughout all different skin tones. So let's clean that off. I don't want to run out of time before we get to all these colors. All right. Oop. I'm getting close. Again, I got paint on my hand. All right, English red. I'm going to do a little bit here just to kind of show you. English Red is one of those colors that is very similar to Burnt Sienna, but it's just ever so slightly different. So I use this very similar to Burnt Sienna. Sometimes I even tone my canvas with the English Red instead of Burnt Sienna because it's got a nice rosiness to it. But so that's the English Red. Put the burnt sienna next to it. So as you can see, they're very, very similar in color. Burnt sienna just has a little bit more yellow tone to it, whereas the English red has a little bit more warmth, kind of a red, uh, almost pink kind of tone to it. Um, and that's, I've used them very similarly, just in all my other mixes. Um, I just, if I want something a little different, I'll grab an English red. It's just a fun color to kind of add in. Um, and again, it's one of those colors that like I can mix and use for my other uh, different skin tones. Now, who was it that asked about the burnt amber? Lisa Vogel. Lisa, we have your burnt amber. <laughs> Burnt Umber is another one of those colors I will add into my palette if I see it in the reference photo. And I'm going to also at the same time uh, grab some raw umber. You guys want to hear a terrible joke? So we have burnt umber and we yeah. have raw umber because apparently no one can cook umber correctly. <laughs> but I'll you're welcome. You may steal that joke. It's actually not my joke, but it's great. So we have burnt umber and raw umber. And they are fantastic colors. So this burnt umber, yeah, this is the burnt umber. Sorry, I was trying to make sure which one I laid down where. Um, burnt umber is a lovely brown kind of a color. Try to make sure I can make enough so you guys can see it. And then raw umber. Oops. Kind of make them the similar in tone. All right, there we go. Those are the two side by side. And they are lovely colors to use in portraits. Um, so again, I can see this is the color of his hand. I might even use, again, just a little bit of the 
yellow ochre mixed in just to kind of um, tinge that a little bit more yellow. Um, but like I can see it in his arm. This is where I would definitely use his, in this portrait, I would use this color. This is the, again, the raw umber, remember. So I can see it in his hands. Um, I can see this right here as well, tip of the nose right here in the, the where the highlight starts going into the, the cheek again. In the eye, I would also use it down here in her neck um, and maybe even right here, but like this area is a lot more um, kind of a warmer tone. Which green color was it that you mixed in? Which green color was it mixed? What? One of the YouTubers asked which green you were using just now. Was that a mixture of the raw umber and the yellow ochre? No, this is just raw umber and titanium white. That's the only two colors I mixed right here. Um, this is the burnt umber and titanium white. I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see the differences between them because in their, like just the mask tone straight out of the tube, they both just look very, very dark. So to kind of show you guys on camera, I'm mixing them with the titanium white just so you can see a little bit more of the undertones. Um, but like, there's no green mixed in. Uh, but yes, I can definitely see this in her chin, in her lip, the underside of her eye, um, her neck. And again, I would probably use this again down here, maybe in her eyebrow, um, maybe in the top of her the head right there. Um, and again, this is also a really good color for hair as well. So I might use this to like highlight her, their hairs that are kind of touched by the light there. Um, and then, so that's the two umbers. Mm. Try not to grab more paint on my hand. Should have worn gloves. <laughs> And then I got three more colors for you guys. Now, again, there are so many colors. So just these three are the ones that I really wanted to show you. This right here is the Ash Rose, which is a very desaturated purple. This is, again, one of those colors that I've, um, oh, this is not even on camera. This is one of those colors that I mix a lot of. So like, you know how I was saying this is a really pretty desaturated purple. Um, this is the color that I would use instead of having to mix that color over and over and over again because I use it so often. Um, now again, you can tint this with any of your other colors, a little bit of yellow and it goes nice and warm. Maybe a touch of the, the red. And you can just kind of shift your colors slowly into other variations to suit your reference. You know, that's a really pretty color. But it's all starting with this ash rose. So that's one of the colors that I usually love to have just on hand because I don't want to mix it over and over again. It's good to know how to mix it. That's the one thing. So if you don't have the uh, the ability to grab all these other colors and you still want to make that color, you you can just start playing around with your paints. Now these two I'm going to show at the same time, just because they are very similar. Now they are off camera, so I'll push this. Hopefully, not get any oil paints on that right there. There we go. So look, very similar. They are both very dark. I don't know if you guys can see the difference yet. This right here is the blue shade. One of my absolute favorite colors in the Sharpen line because it just starts off so, so dark but it's just such a pretty blue color. This would be really, really pretty for landscape, whoever was talking about landscaping. Um, this is one of those colors where like it just straight out of the, the tube, it's just so dark and so pretty. 
but like when you start mixing it with all the other colors, it just so lovely. And then this right here is the green shade, but it's the same thing, just a really lovely shade of green. And it starts off really dark. So again, it's one of those things that like I can use these as my darkest darks in my portraits, but like if I start mixing it in with all my other colors, it just gives you so many variations. And again, the colors that I'm showing you are not the end all be all. You guys can mix a million different colors with all of these different colors. And it just, the, the sky is the limit really. But these are the two shade colors that I really like to use. Um, like this right here, I would use a lot in their hair. Um, you can see, especially because that light is so cool, um, just the top of her hair there. But maybe I have her hair actually be this color and then go in with a uh, titanium white on my brush just to touch it and it would actually mix on my canvas and give you those kind of variations. Um, but that's that's a fun way of using the, the blue shade. Um, now this, I honestly don't know if this is transferable two other lines. Um, I know Lucas has like a blue black, which is very similar, uh, but I don't think they have the green shade. That's why I love Charbon so much is because they have some colors that like he just can't find anywhere. Their shadow colors. They're so pretty. Their shadow colors are fantastic. But that was all of the colors. Um, I did want to show you as well. Charbon, if you are interested in this line, does come in the three different sizes. So we have, um, this is, what is this? 150 milliliter. Um, the big one, this right here in the middle is 60 milliliter. And then this guy right here is just a 20 milliliter, which is really fun. And especially if you want to like try out a, a color, um, this is a fun way of getting it. Um, but if you find like for the titanium white, I always just go for the, the big beefy guy just because I burn through my titanium white. As you can see, I mix all my different colors with titanium white just to kind of show you the undertones. Um, but the 60 milliliter is also a really nice size. So that was portraiture skin tone mixing. Are there any color or any questions before I sign off? They're both very, very intently looking at their screens. Any questions? There's been lots of note taking and stuff, so. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are taking notes. That's awesome. The green on the side of your palette. This. Yes. What color is that? That is, talking. oh, gotcha. Sorry. That right there, that funky green is Thalo Viridian. Um, so sap green is in my basic um, set of greens, or my basic set of colors that I always grab, but Thalo Viridian, um, it's got this funky kind of teal. Uh, when you mix it with the, the titanium white, it turns almost like a minty green. Um, but when you start mixing this in with all the other different colors, you get some really cool variations. Um, but Thalo Viridian, that's the color you were looking for. <laughs> but just for everybody's sake, can you, I'm going to put it back on the overhead. Will you yeah. go back over all the colors? Cause I think lots of people are asking about colors right now. Yes. So again, if you guys mi missed my mixes, you can always watch this again. Um, cause this is going to be available for rewatching on YouTube and Facebook. But to go over my colors again, my basic palette is up here. This is titanium white. This is a French primary yellow, which is only found in Charvin, but if you are looking in a different line, you can use a cadmium yellow or a lemon yellow. Lemon yellow is a little bit um, more of that uh, kind of a cooler yellow than this is though. This is more similar to a cadmium. Um, this is the cadmium red deep, which in a lot of lines you can find cadmium red, uh, medium, deep, and light, so you got options. They're just a slight variation of the cadmium colors. Uh, this is alizarin crimson, which again, you can find in all the different lines. Uh, ultramarine blue, which this is the actual ultramarine blue deep. So uh, it's just a little bit darker. Um, you can also find a ultramarine light in a lot of lines. Uh, this is a sap green, which again, is in all different areas of the you know different uh, brands of paints. Uh, this is yellow ochre. This is Burnt Sienna. Again, you can also find those in most lines. The additional colors that I grabbed, I have Cadmium Orange, which there's a lot of different varieties of orange. I would suggest if you guys are trying to go for more portraiture um, with the realistic kind of colors, 
explore your oranges, your yellows, and your reds. They're very fantastic for all the different skin tones. Um, but this is cadmium orange. Uh, then I usually grab a deep violet, depending on if I see that a lot in my colors. Phthalo viridian. Uh, then I have uh, burnt umber and raw umber, which again, in uh, portraits, these are fantastic to have. Uh, the English red, which again is very similar to the burnt sienna, it's just a little bit more of a warm color, whereas the burnt sienna has a little bit more yellow tone to it. Then I have auburn pink, ash rose. Um, these two, again, I think you were only really going to find in Charbon lines, um, just because it's they have a lot of different colors, um, but I have not found a lot of these transferring across the board to like say acrylics or even watercolors. It's one of those colors that you can mix, but I tend to make, or I tend to use these a lot in my portraits, so I don't wanna have to mix it every single time I make a portrait. I just grab these and I'm good to go. Then of course we have the green shade and the blue shadow, or blue shade, they're, they're the shade colors. So these are the ones that are on my palette right here. So they start off really, really dark. As you can see, um, the swatches right here on the tubes uh, are almost black. They're so dark, but once you start mixing them with titanium white, you can really see that color kind of coming through. And those are the colors I went over today. Um, again, this is not the end-all be-all colors that you absolutely have to have. You don't have to have any of these colors in order to do portraiture. You can use neon colors if you want to, but um, this is just the basic set of what I always go for and then the additional colors that I always grab. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was so much fun. I love portraiture. It's one of my, one of my favorite things to do. So uh, if you guys do have any questions though, again, make sure you put them in the uh, chats below or add it to the commentary if you are um, watching this in the future. I will absolutely go back and uh, answer any questions that I missed. But if you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button because the more you hit the like button, the more it is shared with other artists. So please share this video. <laughs> uh, and again, if you are also interested in any of the paints that I used here, you can go on the Jerry's Artorama website, jerrysartorama.com, and then in the search bar, type in the code JL193, which should be here in the corner. Yep, that one, that corner. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that is the code that will put, bring up the teacher's cart and you should be able to grab all of the items that I used on here. Um, now, I also did put in these little squares. I was going to blob on the, the paint swatches there and I totally forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, but <laughs> that's why those are in the carts. Uh, but if you do anything with portraiture or any of these colors, please make sure to post it to social media. I would love to see your artwork. Uh, if you're on Facebook, we have a Jerry's Live Facebook group page, which in order to get into it, uh, you just have to answer one question. Now, if you don't answer one question, you will be deemed a robot. And the ladies have informed me that we are not allowed to have robots, even though I think they're awesome and should be allowed. But uh, no robots allowed in the group, unfortunately. Um, and that is called the Just Jerry's Live group on Facebook. Now you can also tag me or send me any messages directly to me on my Facebook page, which is any host of Jerry's Live. And then if you want to post it on Instagram, you can also tag in uh, my account, which is misscakes.art. You can also go check out all of my other artworks uh, there and all the other shenanigans, like getting paint in my hair, because that happens. <laughs> More often than not. Okay, yep, it happens a lot. Katie call me out. <laughs> But uh, the other thing that you want to tag in, though, is uh, Jerry's Artorama. I know we have a lot of Jerry's Artorama of Nashville or of Raleigh. Uh, just the account Jerry's Artorama, that's the one you want to tag. And then tag the, the teacher's code or the class code JL193 as well. That way I can find it and search for it. But that was Mixing Skin Tones. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And make sure you join me next week because I'm going to be going over an oil rub and colored pencil technique, which is super fun something I learned in college and is a little bit of a cross between painting and drawing. And it's, it's very quick and just enjoyable to do. So make sure you join me next week. All right. Thank you guys. Bye.